Then some of his disciples said among themselves, what is this that he's saying to us? A little while and, and you will not see me. And again, a little while you will see me because I go to the Father. They said, therefore, what is this that he says? A little while. We don't know what he's saying. These poor guys, they were listening. The words are coming out of his mouth. We hear them, but we don't know what you're saying. Totally at a loss of what's going on. They were at minimum visibility. Minimum visibility. They could not see what was coming down the path. And it was about to get even darker for them, wasn't it? Because in a little while from there, just as Jesus said, in a little while, Jesus was arrested. And he wouldn't offer anything in his defense. And they wouldn't understand that. And then a little while after that, he would be hanging on a cross, totally humiliated, even though all the power of heaven was available to him to come down from that cross, but he wouldn't, and they wouldn't understand that. And then a little while after that, his body would mysteriously disappear from the tomb. And they wouldn't understand that. As a matter of fact, they wouldn't even believe it uh, until he appeared himself. Limited visibility going on and very little hope at that time. Very little hope. When we can't see, we're afraid. And when we're afraid, we lose hope. It's just the way it works. But we already said in all of this 50 days, God takes them from there in this totally hopeless situation to where they have the maximum hope. How did he do it? Well, why do we even care? Good history lesson? No, because this is the early church. This is how God works. And if we could take this apart a little bit and analyze it, we would see how God works in the line of hope today. In the same way with you and I, it's the same principles. They still apply. So what happened? How did he do it? How did he do it? Well, we could probably take a lot of angles on this, but let me just throw out a couple of clear steps that, that you know, without any question, these things are what happened. Step one, God affirms he's actually there. Well, you might go, duh, that sounds pretty obvious. <laughs> Not really. When you're in that place where visibility is bad and the prayers are bouncing off the ceiling, it is not so obvious that God is actually there. And one of the greatest things that can start a turnaround for us is when it breaks through to us again, you know, God, you are. You are actually there. First step, God has to let you know. First big step, when we hit the limited visibility, God is good and God is there. You may not know anything else, but that is a big thing. And that is exactly the step he started with those first disciples, the apostles. Second step is this. God assures us that he has a plan. And we know God is good, so if God has a plan, it's a good plan. But that's still only part of it because God has a good plan and you are part of it. Man, that's some serious reassurance. God has a good plan, and you are part of it. In that uh, John 16, when we're reading verses uh, 13 and 14, it says, However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. He will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. He's going to take what's mine and make you part of it. You are part of the good plan. But look at the, I don't even know where I'm going. You are part of the good plan. Life stinks right now. I'm suffering. You are part of the good plan. Step two is realizing we are part of a good plan. There is a place. There is a place for us in this plan. Step three God took with these guys was to move from the outside in. Was to move from the outside in. There's a balance, there's a holistic side of Christianity that if we don't get this, we really don't live Christianity. Even the best teachings of Jesus are the outside in. You, you read them, you try to understand them, you try to live, well, they're coming into you, outside, in your ears, and then you try and make sense of them. But there reaches a point where it has to be from the inside out. And that's not... Jesus, as far as 
the way the roles are laid out in the persons of the Trinity, Jesus says that's not his job. He's got another guy to do that. The counselor, the, the parakletos, the Holy Spirit, that part of God. And he works from the inside out. Think of how this ultimately worked out for them in, this, in the days of Pentecost. They started with minimum visibility, maximum fear. God speaks to them and prepares them. They come up to the time of the day of Pentecost. 50 days. This is kind of the end of the thing. Well, remember what they looked like in the beginning. A bunch of guys locked in a room, scared to death of what's going to happen. And by the time we hit Pentecost in Acts 2, in verse 2, it reads like this. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven. It was a mighty uh, wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Filled with the Holy Spirit. Filled with the Holy Spirit. That's an inside thing going on and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The Holy Spirit is present, visibility clears. The Holy Spirit is present, visibility clears. Peter, who had been cowering in an upper room, now we, now we read this, Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. That's some pretty confident. By the time you get up and say, let this be known, and you better listen to what I'm saying, you're talking about somebody with some confidence. You're talking about somebody who knows they have something to say. They see further than the end of their nose. This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. Wow, clarity forward and backwards. He's just now tying in 400 years worth of history, or 700 years worth of history here. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. What does it mean to prophesy? It's not simply talking about the future. Prophecy is vision. Prophecy is visibility. Prophecy is where uh, at its real essence is you can look into God's word and look so deeply that you can tell other people things they don't really know. And he goes on from there. Your young men shall see visions, visibility. Your old men shall dream dreams. And that's just not dreaming. That is talking about seeing things that haven't been seen before. Visibility comes way up, but it has to do with the Holy Spirit. Jesus goes, the Holy Spirit comes and testifies of him. Going on. The mist clears a little bit when we start to understand. A person comes and says, you hear some of the things that Jesus taught, and you go, ah, you know what, that makes sense. I could have some hope in life if I could live by that. And, and, and as we go on, uh, we understand not only do they make sense, it sounds like you're teaching, I have a part in this. Wow, hope comes up a little bit. You mean there's actually hope in life? Yeah. But the real clarity, the real life, the real magic starts when we're open to the Holy Spirit. And God, in this form, takes up residence. You have a functional link with God. That's when the visibility really clears up and we start working now, not just from the outside in, but from the inside out. That's when things really clear up. God took them from no hope to unstoppable hope in those three steps. 